Welcome to CyberRoom CCNSP Online Training. Uh, this training consists of some training prerequisites and assume that you will be having this basic operational OS understanding. You will be having networking basics idea. You will be having some idea about the protocols like HTTP or HTTPS, IMAP, POP3, SMTP and you also have a fair bit of idea about TCP and IP protocol suite and some network security fundamentals idea. Based on these prerequisites, we'll be doing the entire CCNSP module training online. Alright, so first come to module 1. In this module, we'll be talking about CyberRoom product overview. So we'll have a close look at the evolution of firewalls, we'll have a brief CyberRoom overview, we'll take a look at the CyberRoom central console, and CyberRoom on cloud management service and finally we'll take a look on CyberRoom iView. So what is a firewall? A firewall can be a hardware or a software used to secure your network access. A very basic and simplest firewall which you can see on all your Windows machine is the Windows firewall. So it exactly can be in the same form. It can be in a hardware or in the software. So previously companies would place their system directly on the internet with a public IP address and there used to be no firewalls, no secure internet access. It just used to be the company used to be exposed live on a single pipe public IP address. Later on, as time passed by, the border router which connected the internet to the local network used to offer some level of security. And that's why the need for better security gave rise to new types of firewalls for an internet enabled office because a border router can't offer a good level of security it used to offer some very basic level of security via access control list so this is what they used to do when an access or request comes to the firewall if it is allowed it's access if it is not allowed like a wrong packet coming in and it just gets dropped which is not accessed or it is not achievable for a firewall. <coughs> right, so the first type of firewall which came into the market is the packet filter. What exactly is a packet filtering technology? It filters packets based on source or destination IP address and source or destination port number and it checks on a packet per packet basis but it provides minimum amount of required security. This is how a packet filtering technology is to work. So when a request comes to firewall, it inspects for the destination port number or IP address and it says, okay, port 80 allowed. I'll allow it. Okay, you're not accessing port 80, so I'll drop your request because you're accessing port number 8080, which is not allowed as per my firewall rule. So this is a very basic example of a packet firewall, a packet filter technology which used to be on the very edge old days. Then came the age of application filters. So application filters situated between protected network and the internet. Secure, it's a bit more secure than the packet filtering technology I would say because the entire packet including the application portion of the packet can be completely inspected. So it not only checks the source and destination IP address and port number but it also checks the application header of the packet. So apart from being a packet filter firewall, they also check for source and destination IP addresses along with the application header of the packet. So now when a packet comes to the firewall, it checks for the port number and for the IP address as well and it also checks for the application header. So the packet comes in and says, okay, your destination port number is wrong. It drops it, so it acts like a kind of packet filter. Plus, it also checks for the application header whether that particular application is allowed through that particular firewall or not. Next came the evolution to stateful inspection firewall. So, stateful inspection firewall, as the name suggests, it monitors the state of a communication, or I will rather say, it monitors the state of a connection. So, it not only works as a packet filter and application proxy but also maintain the state of each and every connection which means that the packet goes via the similar route in which it was received. So what's the advantage of going with the stateful inspection firewall? It does not check any rule on sending the response packet. So while the response comes in, if the request has been generated from inside the network which is behind a firewall, the response is allowed. 
because it maintains the state of each and every connection. So this is how it happens. So the request comes into the firewall. The firewall maintains the particular session and it says, okay, the session is still alive, so I'll allow it. The next packet comes in and it says, no, the session has expired, so I'll drop it. So it maintains the state of each and every session and connection. That's what a stateful inspection firewall is. Now, a lot of different technologies used to exist in the age old time. You've got a separate router, you've got a separate firewall, you've got an antivirus solution, an anti-spam solution. It became very tough for administrator to maintain and manage different vendors and different products. That's when the concept of UTM came into the picture. So what is an UTM? It's a firewall device with all the security features bundled in a single product. So traditional UTM functions as a network firewall, network intrusion prevention system, antivirus, anti-spam, VPN solution, filtering web content solution and load balancing solution all in one box. So it helped the administrator a lot because you don't have to manage multiple solutions for multiple features. It's all plugged into one particular device which is called an unified threat management or abbreviated as UTM. And it also has the capability to generate reports and maintain the state of each and every session and connections like a stateful inspection firewall. So when a request comes to the UTM, it says, okay, is there any virus in that connection? No, it lets it through. Similarly, when it finds a virus, okay, there is a virus in there, drop the connection. That's just a small example of a feature of UTM for antivirus function. It does the same thing for spam. It can act as VPN and all other features which are specified in this particular slide. So what are the pros and cons of going with an UTM? It can be deployed as a single appliance, which can take control of your entire network as a single rack mounted appliance. It is also capable of generating reports, but becomes essential to connect the UTM appliance to a reporting server. So there is a need to secure the reporting server, especially from external attacks. Be very careful almost all of the UTM they have to be connected to an external reporting server but you also need to protect that external reporting server or if your reporting server is compromised your entire organization's reports and data is almost leaked out and most importantly if the reporting server goes down it becomes very difficult to maintain and fetch the reports so that these are some of the pros and cons of UTMs so what are the challenges with the current UTM vendors out in the, out in the world so the first and foremost challenge which you can think of is unable to handle dynamic environments like a Wi-Fi or a DHCP environment because the source IP address changes continually. Today I logged in, I might have an IP address of 10, 10, 10, 10. After an hour I probably released and renewed my IP address and my IP address got changed to 10, 10, 10, 20. So it becomes a huge challenge for UTMs you see, okay, what policy should I apply to this IP address? Because now, IP address is changed, so it's become, it becomes one of the major challenges for the modern UTMs. Lack of user identity recognition and control, that's another challenge faced by today's UTMs, because UTMs are inadequate in handling threats that target the user, especially phishing attacks, farming attacks. These actually, these attacks are targeted for the user since they can't handle or they don't have proper identity recognition and control they can't protect this kind of attacks and unable to identify source of internal threats in today's world according to a study made by Yankee Group 50% of the security problems originate from internal threats so let's assume you're hosting your web server email server on the DMZ segment and a LAN user or an employee has some grants against the grudge against the probably the administrator of the web server. So he launched an attack on the web server. As a result of which your web server got compromised, so the UTM probably locked the source IP address. But after launching the attack, the attacker is smart enough and he changed his source IP address. Now the administrator goes and searches the IP address which he got in the logs and reports and he catches a wrong person who has not attacked it. So that's another problem when you are unable to identify the original source of internal threats. And they all lack in 
although I would say most of the UTMs they lack in-depth features, sacrifice flexibility as UTM try to fit in many features into a single appliance. They'll give you all the features punched into one box and as a result of which you lack granularity for each and every feature. They've got inadequate logging, reporting, and some of, the, some of them even lack granular features in individual solutions. And they're also unable to handle blended threats. So what are blended threats? Some threats which arise out of internet activity done by internal members of the organization. External threats that use multiple methods to attack it, slammer. This kind of blended threats cannot be protected by UTM. And that's why you need an identity-based UTM which is capable of identifying the original source of an attack. The original identity-based UTMs will identify who is doing what in your network. So you have complete visibility in your entire organizational network. What's happening at what point of time and who is doing what in your network. So let's have a product overview of CyberOM. CyberOM is the next generation UTM, so it's the identity-based UTM solution that offers integrated internet security with fine granularity through its unique identity-based policies. It offers you comprehensive threat protection with an identity-based firewall, it gives you threat-free tunneling over VPN, it gives you gear to antivirus and anti-spam, it provides you IPS or intrusion prevention system. It also offers you web application firewall. It gives you high availability, content filter for web and application firewall. It gives you bandwidth management, multi-link manager, on a client reporting so that you don't have to maintain an external reporting server and you get reports on the appliance itself. And it gives you more than 1,200 drill down reports on the appliance itself. We'll be covering all of these detailed modules in the later section of the training while we cover individual module-wise. But as of now, these are the features which are offered by CyberOM. So CyberOM security approach. So CyberOM is the only identity-based UGM threat management appliance that provides integrated internet security to enterprises and educational institutions through its unique granular user-based controls. This is the identity based approach or security approach of CyberOM. It gives you all the modules as we discussed earlier like firewall, VPN, antivirus, anti-spam, IPS, bandwidth management, content filtering. So where are we different? We are different in all the modules that we offer are tightly integrated with identity and whatever feature you configure in CyberOM, you can configure identity-based policies in individual features. So whatever you want to configure, all right. You want to do load balancing based on identity? Yes, you can do it with CyberOM. You want to do bandwidth management with identity? Yes, you can do it with CyberOM. You want to have antivirus identity-based policies? Yes, you can do it. So whatever modules you want to use in CyberOM, everything is tightly integrated with identity. And this is achievable via Layer 8, which is a patent pending technology from CyberOM, and we are the innovator of this technology. So when a packet comes to CyberOM, CyberOM looks at the IP address, but stamps a user identity in that packet. And when it processes the security policies, instead of looking at the IP address, it rather looks at the identity. So even if your IP address changes in a dynamic environment, like a DHCP or Wi-Fi, where the source IP address constantly changes, doesn't matter to us because we know the identity, we know the source user who has generated that particular packet and we apply respective security policies to that. So we don't fail in a dynamic environment. We actually are very, do very well wherein the IP address changes continually. It doesn't matter to us and this is possible with the layer 8 technology which CyberOM has innovated. We actually had a virtual layer which we call the layer 8 in order, apart from the traditional several layers, and this is the layer where we stamp the identity and check and apply security policies over there. We can check which user is accessing what or which user is doing what in your network. There are different appliances available from CyberOM. We have got hardware UTM appliances, we have got virtual UTM appliances. In the hardware appliance segment, we have got small and remote offices which range from 35 wireless, 35 normal, 
25 wireless ING next generation and 25 ING next generation CR15 wireless and CR59 next generation. For the small and medium segment, we've got 300 ING XP. I'll be explaining the term XP in a later slide. We've got 200 ING and XP, 100 ING and 50 ING. For the larger enterprises, which is with next generation firewall or NGFW, we have got 2500 ING XP, 1500 ING or XP, 1000 ING XP, 750 ING and 500 ING. For the virtual UTM appliances, our licensing is based on number of cores of the processors. You've got CRIV 1C, 2C, 4 core, 8 core, or 12 core. It's available for VMware, be it ESX or ESXi or Workstation or Player. It's available for Microsoft Windows Hyper-V, and it's also available for KVM, which is kernel-based virtual machine. So, all appliances or all cyber room models which are ending with XP come with flexi port option. Just for an example, CR25 and XP has got five flexi port options. So, what are these flexi ports? And we have got different slots where which you can plug in later on, and these are the XP models, so which means come with flexi port. So, what are the flexi port options that cyber room offers you? We have got eight G 1 GBPS copper ports, 8 1 GBPS fiber ports, or 4 10 GBPS fiber ports, whichever you would like to go for depending on your network needs. So you can either go with any one of these three flexible options which we give with CyberOM. So what are the features that are offered with one-time sale? When you buy the basic appliance without any subscriptions, what are the features that you get? You get an identity-based firewall, you get 8 cross 5 support for one month from the registration, you get VPN, you get SSL VPN free of cost, you get bandwidth management and multiple link management for which you are not charged. You don't have to pay any subscription fee for this. So what are the features that are offered with subscription? You have to subscribe for gateway antivirus, which includes anti-malware, phishing and spyware protection. You have to subscribe for gateway and tie spam. You have to subscribe for web and application filtering subscription. You have to subscribe for intrusion prevention system, 8 cross 5, 24 cross 7 premium support, and web application firewall necessary for protecting your web servers. And subscription services are available on a one year, two years, or three year subscription basis. Remember, Web application firewall or WAF is available from 25 ING and above. It's not available on the smallest model which is 15 ING or 15 WING. It starts from 25 ING and above. So we actually can, instead of going with all the subscriptions separately, you can actually bundle them into a common subscription which we call features offered with bundle subscription. And the bundle can be the combination of one or all of the following modules like get to antivirus, anti-spam, IPS, web and application firewall or filter, A cross 5 and web, web application firewall. So let's have a look at the different bundles provided. The first one is the TVS, which is the total value subscription, which offers you get to antivirus, which includes anti-malware, phishing and spyware protection, anti-spam, web and application filter, IPS. 8 cross 5 support. Remember, it does not contain web application firewall and 24 cross 7 email, phone, and chat support. If you want to go with CSVS, which means these are bundle subscription with one subscription key. So if you apply or buy SVS, you'll be getting gateway antivirus, web and application filtering, IPS, and 8 cross 5 support. The only thing, the only difference I would say between TBS and SVS is. TVS contains gateway and tie spam, which SVS does not contain it. So when you are recommending some subscriptions to your customer or when you are buying some subscriptions for your own cyber room, depending on your requirement, you can go with any one of these bundles. We've got some other bundles as well, which are TVSP or SVSP. TVSP is Total Value Subscription Plus, which includes gateway and tie virus, Get to entire spam, web and application filtering, IPS, and 24 cross 7. So, this is the difference 
between TVS and TVSP. Same thing goes with SVSP. It includes entire virus, web and application filtering, IPS, and 24 cross 7. But this is the difference between SVS and SVSP is the 24 cross 7 support. There's another type of bundle, which is CVS, Comprehensive Value Subscription, which includes everything, antivirus, anti-spam, web and application filtering, web and application firewall, which is necessary for protecting your web servers, IPS, and 24 cross 7 email, phone, and chat tech support. And there's another subscription, which we call the NGFWS, or the Next Generation Firewall Security Subscription. It's available only for NGFW devices. Remember it, it's not available for UTMs, it's only for NGFW devices. And it offers IPS, web and application filtering, and 24 cross 7 email, phone, and chat tech support. So how do you check your subscriptions? You need to log in to customer.cyberom.com, which we'll be doing while we do the registration and subscription part of the module. And there you can go there and you can check your subscription status, whether they are in trials or they are expired, they are when they are expiring. And if they are subscribed, you can see the details of the different subscriptions which are applied on your particular CyberOM. So there are two different kinds of appliances. One is NFR or not for resale appliance and there is the other one which is the regular appliance for the end customer. So what is a regular appliance? Regular appliances are for end customers only. So the cyber room appliance sold to a partner or reseller for direct customer sale. Since we do channel business, we do it via resellers. So we sell regular appliances to partners or reseller for selling it directly to customer. Once that appliance is registered, the customer can get three trials each of 15 days. So he can use it for free for 45 days. After that, he has to, he have to purchase the subscription. If he doesn't purchase the subscriptions, he can still use it as a plain firewall, but none of the subscriptions will work. The second Appliance type is NFR appliance or not for resale appliance, which is the demo appliances. These appliances are sold to partner or reseller for conducting demos so that you can give it to different customers to check it out, to do a POC proof of concept or do a demo to that customer. You can register it unlimited number of times under different credentials after factory reset. So we'll get three 15 days trial for all subscriptions based modules after each registration. Let's say you give it to customer A, he used it for three trials, 15 days, he says, no, I don't like it, he, give it back. he gives it back to you. So you give it to another customer, you do a factory set on the plant, you register with another email address, and that other customer can do a POC. He liked it, he can buy it right away from there. And in case it's a virtual appliance, you still offer you a trial module, which is called, the trial mode is called CRIVTR, which is the trial, the TR in this model signifies it's a trial for virtual. Now this is one of the most important questions, how do you select the right appliance? So in this model, or module, I'll show you how to choose the right product for your organization. So how do you select the right appliance? Selecting the right appliance depends on quite a few number of factors, like how many number of concurrent users are there on the network, what's the bandwidth used for upload and download, and the number of servers you're going to publish, whether it's an email server, it's a web server, or which kind of servers and how many of them are you going to publish it, what's the number of concurrent number of VPN tunnels which you're going to use it, and how many number of users are going to access VPN, and in case if you have some additional requirements like authentication, unified threat control, or high availability, in case if you have all these reaches. So we'll see some sample cases wherein we'll be calculating the right model or we'll do the appropriate sizing of a net cyber room appliance for your network. Now, as the name suggests, before I move on to the case one, how to select your right appliance, we normally say, if it's a 50 ING appliance or if it's any appliance, the right formula for calculating the number of concurrent users is 
the model number plus 50 percent of the model number so which is if it's 50 ing it can support 50 plus 25 which is 75 concurrent users using all the subscriptions now again this depends this is not fixed because it actually depends on the number of concurrent sessions or connections supported per appliance which varies from network to network you can't go to a retail store and expect a huge number of connections whereas if you go to an educational institute there might be fewer number of users but too many connections being generated so the ideal sizing would be to ask your customer or anybody or if you're buying it for your own self you need to find out the average number of connections being generated at any point of time if you can't do that you can come back and look after the right model like this apply the same formula model number plus 50 percent of the model number so we'll take a small case which is the case one and we'll discuss this scenario how we size this particular network so we've got a small business customer with 15 concurrent users having 4 mbps internet connectivity and a 3G as a backup link. Customer is looking for a solution to protect the network from internal and external threats as well as to increase the employee productivity by blocking unproductive resources. So which model of cyber roam you will choose? I'm sure you guessed it right. It's 15 ING or 15 wireless ING if customer needs wireless access point as well. And what are the subscriptions that you're going to refer in? You're gonna recommend in SVS, which is the security value subscription, which includes antivirus, which includes web and application filtering, IPS, and a cross five support. See, customer wants to increase employee productivity, which means he does not need entire spam. That's why we're referring him or recommending him SVS, which is not inclusive of spam, but he needs web and application filtering to block unwanted website browsing and unwanted applications as well. we will take another case. In this case, customer has expanded the business in country by opening four new branches. And each branch has got three to five internet users accessing central accounting system hosted at central office. But the branches, they need wireless connectivity and internet bandwidth at central office has increased to 12 Mbps. Customer would like to extend the central office network in a secure way to allow access of the accounting system. So which appliances are you going to recommend him for central office, branch office and what subscriptions are you going to recommend him? Now remember in this particular example you've got each branch having three to five internet users and they will be VPNing to the central office because they have central accounting system which they need to access securely so you need to consider those number of users hitting your central office as well so the calculation goes like this you've got 15 users at the central office and you've got five users at four branches which means 5 into 4 which is 20 plus 15 equal to 35 concurrent users so that's why you can recommend him a 50 ing what for the branch offices they can go with 15 wireless ing 15 wing because as it's rightly mentioned the branch office need wireless connectivity so you need to take a careful look at this wireless connectivity option so that's why they need a 15 WING and what subscriptions you can recommend him. In the central office you can say okay they need to go with TVS which includes antivirus, anti-spam, IPS, we have an application filtering and 8 cross 5 support. But at the branches they don't need anti-spam so they can go with SVS which doesn't offer anti-spam but offer the other security features. Alright so we'll take another case. The same customer has now created a DMZ zone and added five business critical servers to protect from various network attacks. So what are the servers that he has installed? Server 1, I'll say it's a, you've got a one email server, one web server, one FTP server and two accounting server. Which means in total they're having five servers. Out of them they have got web server and email server as well which is important to remember when you recommend them the subscriptions. 
Customers expecting around 100 concurrent users to surf their corporate website and approximate 350 emails per day and the internet bandwidth has increased to 20 Mbps. Customer is looking for a replex, replacement of the existing device. So which appliance model will you choose? You'll go with CR100 ING considering 30 additional users. Remember in the last example in case one you've got like from around 20 concurrent users plus now you've got an additional 30 users. So 30% of additional 100 external users apart from 35 existing users. So this makes a total of 65 users and email traffic as well. You're getting 350 emails per day, so you have to consider that as well. And that's why you recommend 100 ING considering 65 concurrent users plus email traffic. And this time, inbound traffic has also increased due to email and web server. So this needs increased new sessions per second. Remember, at the end of the day, whatever you are doing, you need to calculate or you need to find an average new sessions or existing concurrent sessions as well. So what are the subscriptions that you will recommend him? You recommend him CVS, which includes everything because remember you've got a web server which needs WAF, web application firewall subscription. So since you're hosting a web server, you recommend him CVS, which includes web application firewall, antivirus, anti-spam, IPS, web and application filtering. Right, so let's have a look at the CyberOM Central Console, CCC. So CCC is a central management appliances when you have multiple appliances in different branches and you need to control it centrally. You go with the CCC virtual appliance or you go with the CCC physical appliances. So what are the features that CCC offers you? It offers the flexibility of hardware and virtual appliances. It provides centralized security management across distributed UTM appliances. It also enables high levels of security for MSSPs and larger enterprises and it gives you layer 8 identity based policies and centralized reports and alerts. CCC hardware and virtual appliances can manage both of them. Now when you are having multiple branches, you have got let's say hundreds of different branches where you are having all cyber homes. So instead of configuring and logging individually to each and every appliances, you create a single security policy at the CCC and you push it to the different group of 100 appliances. So it becomes or it makes your life easier. It makes your easier management of multiple appliances across different branch sites. And it also provides granular secu security and visibility into remote and branch offices across the globe. And so that's when you need to go with CyberOM Central Console to manage different appliances dispersed around the globe. So what are the key highlights of CCC? You've got centralized management, you've got security management with reduced policy deployment time, you've got ease and flexibility of management, you've got security against misuse of administrator privileges, and finally, you've got centralized visibility, which is very important. If one of the branches goes down, immediately you'll be reported in CCC that this branch has gone down, and you can take the necessary action required for that particular branch. So CCC are available in hardware and also in virtual appliances as well. In hardware, you've got CCC 15, 15, 100, 200, 500, and 1,000. So how, what exactly does this model number signify? CCC 15, which means you can manage 15 appliances at a time. If you go with CCC 15, you can manage up to 50 cyber rooms at a time. The moment 51 appliances come into the pic picture, you need to upgrade that to CCC 100. So these are the significance of the model number. Same thing goes with virtual CCC appliances as well. Whether it's CCC V15, you can manage 15 cyber room appliances. If it's CCC V15, you can manage 50 cyber room appliances and hence forward. The virtual CCC appliances are available for VMware, Windows Hyper-V and for KVM as well. <coughs> We've also got a cloud option for CCC which is hosted on our cloud or CyberOM cloud and it's called CyberOM on Cloud Management Service. 
It's available via your partner portal account. So you go to your partner portal and you can log in and you can see on cloud management over here and you can click on the option manage and you can select which users you'd like to give access to what CCC you can send invitation to your different retailers for managing their appliances and you can charge different service fees to them this is especially important if you're offering different services or if you're an MSP or MSSP offering different services to your customers and this is hosted on our cloud so you don't need to host any appliances at your site you can write right away do it from the partner portal finally we come down to cyberom iview which is the cyberom's on appliance reporting solution it's also available in a software format which you can download and install it on a desktop computer or in server it can be a windows server it can be a linux server as well and the Cyberom iView comes on each and every appliances apart from 15 ING, which do not have a hard drive on it. So Cyberom iView on appliance reporting tool comes right from 25 ING and onwards. So this is the on appliance logging and reporting solution. So it collects the logs and events. It segregates them into logging, reporting, and identity. And finally, it shows you different kinds of reports for data protection, security management, forensic analysis, and compliance management. It's available, as I was telling it to you, it's inbuilt in CyberOM, UTM series of appliances, which comes with each and every model apart from the 15 ING. It's available as a dedicated hardware appliance. We've got different models for CyberOM iView, like iView 200, iView 100, and iView 25. Now these model numbers has got significance if you are going with 200 which means it can 200 appliances can be added onto the iview and iview can be used as a central reporting tool for 200 appliances again if you are an mssp or an msp and you are maintaining or managing a lot of customers network and you want a central point for reporting you can go with the dedicated iview appliances or you can download the software and install it on a server or on a desktop computer and then you can start getting reports from different cyber rooms which are installed at your customer place so it's available as an open source software as well which you can download and install it for centralized reporting alright so that brings us to the end of the module and the next module which we'll be doing is module 2 where we'll learn how to deploy cyber room in different modes Thank you for attending the presentation in Module 1. We'll see you at Module 2.